All right, welcome back to Born Reviews. I'm not so happy, Nick. Here, Jody, there. Why don't you? I was gonna say, why aren't you happy, Nick? Can't find the hat. This is a Mickey Flanagan video, and I can't find my hat. That's how much of a slob I am, apparently, because I cannot find it, and it's sad. So Cobra Kai is gonna have to do. It has nothing to do with Mickey Flanagan. Nothing to do with England. It's just a sad world. Sorry. I think I'm wearing Cobra Kai. I'm not even sure. I'm just yeah. that displaced right now. Speaking of Mickey Flanagan, which one are we checking out today? Mickey Flanagan was an international lover in the 1980s. Oh, was he now? Let's find out. Excited to find that out. International lover in the 1980s. I'm assuming that's a little bit of loosey-goosey right there. Speak. <laughs> uh, I was going to say speaking of loosey-goosey, but it didn't work out. If you like our video, our reaction anyway, please don't forget to... Like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can be aware of our next uploaded video. Be aware, people. Be very aware. Here we go. But my big thing in the 80s, chasing women. Back in the 80s, I was an international lover and player. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I'd made love to women as far afield as Cardiff. <laughs> Cornwall. I've got a girl to wank me off on the Isle of Wight. <laughs> it's a day trip. <laughs> day trip. It was easy to get sex in the 80s. You had to really work for it back then. Women didn't want to part up too quickly. You had to go to work. If you met a girl and you were taking her out, you on a Saturday night, bosh, here we go. Splash a pack of a man. <laughs> get your jeans out the cleaners. Nice crease on them. There you go. <laughs> And you took her out for the evening. You treated her. You took her out for a steak, Diane. <laughs> Few tins are no the Biancos. <laughs> and if she wanted a prawn cocktail, she got a prawn cocktail. <laughs> prawn cocktail, that's an interesting way of Women went saying. mental for the prawn cocktail in the 80s. You see her little face light up. You've sat her down and you've presented her with prawns. <laughs> Lettuce in a wine glass. <laughs> Drizzled with the dressing from a thousand islands. <laughs> <laughs> Not salad cream tonight, princess. <laughs> tonight you're special. <laughs> you're gonna get a dressing that's been gathered from a thousand islands. <laughs> Brought to this steakhouse in Bethnal Green. <laughs> now you want the vagina. This hasn't changed. <laughs> Men have chased the vagina since time began. Absolutely. The vagina has changed, as we know. <clears throat> it was still a big hairy beast back in the 80s. <laughs> big hairy, militant, Marxist, feminist vagina. <laughs> was angry, the vagina, in the 80s. <laughs> Had a terrible attitude. <laughs> I mean, the knickers weren't small and it was still busting out the side. <laughs> Big angry vagina. He started rolling these Marx's knickers down and it would come out. <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> but you want the vagina. So I got myself a place. Kitted it out for love. Bed sitter. Quality bed sitter, not cancel. <laughs> and I went and got all the latest gear. I spent about 700 quid. Right, let's go. Take her back, sit her down on the futon. <laughs> She's half in bed already. <laughs> Up there for thinking. <laughs> go over to my stereo stacker system. Got a stereo stacker. That's an Awawa. With a built-in graphic equaliser. <laughs> it does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I slip into the cassette deck. Yes. Now that's what I call music. <laughs> Two. <laughs> so. Now I know Luther Van Dross will be on in a minute. When Luther comes on, Bosh, I mean. Yeah. This frees up the time for me to go off to the kitchenette area. I've got a kitchenette area. 
Don't piss how I'm living in. <laughs> kitchen area. I go behind me a little bit of curtain. <laughs> Grab a bit of curtain, man, your kitchen. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I Love change it. into the uniform of the international player, which we know is the silk black kimono. <laughs> Come back out into the main area. <laughs> I've kept my jeans on. I'm not a monster. <laughs> <laughs> I turn round to reveal the dragon. <laughs> Hold that pose. Come back with a nice chilled bottle of blue nun. <laughs> oh, she's gone. <laughs> where you at? Where you at? <laughs> oh my god. I love that ending. Jeez. That was awesome. I I know that rope he's talking about with the big yes. dragon on the back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that anyone ever thought like this, <laughs> this will seal the deal. <laughs> She's, she might not be too sure about me, but <laughs> now we got to do it. I mean, he pulled out all the stops. Um, that was awesome. Oh, like, honestly, oh my God. his description of that made me think of like some hilarious episode of a sitcom or something where some guy yes. tries to pull that stuff. Yes. And even when they turn around with like, I'm guessing it's a crappy bottle of wine, turns around with it and like, where'd you go? <laughs> I have it all planned out. <laughs> with your jeans on. Yeah. I'm not a monster. <laughs> Oh, I just, I just can't. My <laughs> cheeks are so bad. And I loved his international lover of all the different little cities yeah, different in places. England. <laughs> Cardiff, Cornwall, <laughs> the Isle of Wight. It's a day trip, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. That was so good. Oh, my gosh. Oh, um, my cheeks. One question I have, though, is now that's what I call music volume two. There's no way those were out in the 80s. Right? Because I, like I remember those 90s. being out like late 90s, 2000s, because yeah. there was like so many volumes oh of it. Volume gosh. 23, 24. Yes. Maybe, possibly, I think there was two or three of those each year they pulled out. And they always sold. Like I used to yeah. be one of those nerds that used to follow the Billboard charts just for fun. And those things were always, like for a week or two, they would really? be. Yeah, like in the top 10, top 20 selling, like always. I don't know. I have to look it up. Did they start off on cassette tapes in the 80s? I doubt. That's, see, that's the stupid thing I focus on. I still remember my first cassette tape, though. What was it? Oh, my gosh. It was, who's the dude who's, like, in jail or whatever for... Um, R. Kelly? Yeah, well, is he, I think so. Is he the one that um, sang that um, song about... Oh, crap. I shouldn't have spoke. But, yeah, I, I'm 99% sure it's him. What was that famous song that he had? Um, or kill it? I don't know. About, like, flying. I, I oh, believe no. I can fly. Fly like an eagle? No, it was, it was who sang that I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch I the sky. Can... Yes. Oh, that yes. maybe was our killing. Yes, because that was my first cassette for that song, and I would listen to it all the time while using my Easy Bake Oven. <laughs> now we're <laughs> rocking. Now we're rocking. Of, of our home that had pastel blue tile all over the counter yep i believe i can fly mm -hmm. yes i don't know what my first That's cassette my first tape cassette. was because my dad was huge into music and so he had his records he has his cassettes so yeah I was just we had his. records and cassettes i don't know what the first one was that i own who knows but i i love cassette tapes i mean i used to they're they're so ridiculous but the idea of being able to record a cd I on know. a cassette tape i mentioned that a few times in videos i love that Great little mixes that way it was i know it was a lot of work but it was so much fun to do that it was so fun to make mixtapes yeah and then to like give and them to your to friends listen to them and be like stuff. guys listen 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 we don't have to skip and change the cds they're all on one tape every awesome song and then you'd make your mixtapes for like your moods your breakup mixtape oh, and you're like oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I did. Your angry mixtape. I'm not going to lie. Most of my mixtapes was to make my dad happy go on trips. Oh. And like you'd always get the stamp of approval on a song. If he's driving, right? And he turns it up just a little bit. He would always do that. And I think I do that too. I'm not sure. But he would do that religiously. If he liked a song that was playing on the radio or on a tape, he would turn it up a little bit. And I'm like, yes, I got the volume up. It was like two or three would have made a difference to him. And then it was funny because he could play a song he didn't like. He turned it back down a little bit. Like subconsciously. <laughs> Like, like, come no, on. Like, oh. no, I messed up. I got three volume ups, but eight volume downs. 
No, see, our road trips are full of my dad's Queen, Eagles, Meatloaf, like, it's I grew up ones. on those. Those are all yeah. fantastic ones. Sing. Let us know what your go-to uh, cassette tape was yes, or songs or on mixtape. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time. Goodbye.